see how an electrolytic cell works. A simple device to maintain a steady current in an electric circuit is the electrolytic cell. An electrolytic cell decomposes chemical compounds by means of electrical energy in a process called electrolysis. The Greek word lysis means to break up. The result is that the chemical energy is increased. A simple electrolytic cell is shown here. Two electrodes called the positive P and the negative N as shown in the figure. They are immersed in an electrolytic solution. Dipped in the solution, the electrode has a potential difference V plus into V plus greater than zero between itself and the solution immediately adjacent to it marked A in the figure. Similarly, the negative electrode develops a negative potential minus V minus V minus greater than or equal to zero relative to the electrolyte adjacent to it marked as B in the figure. When there is no current, the electrolyte has the same potential throughout so that the potential difference between P and N is V positive minus minus V negative equals V positive plus V negative. This difference is called the electromotive force EMF of the cell and is denoted by epsilon. Thus, epsilon equals V positive plus V negative which is greater than zero. The electrolyte through which a current flows has a finite resistance R called the internal resistance. Consider first the situation when R is infinite so that I equals V by R equals zero where V is the potential difference between P and N. V equals potential difference between P and A plus potential difference between A and B plus potential difference between B and N equals epsilon. Thus, EMF epsilon is the potential difference between the positive and negative electrodes in an open circuit, that is, when no current is flowing through the cell. If R is finite, I is not zero. In that case, the potential difference between P and N is I equals V plus plus V minus minus IR equals epsilon minus IR. Epsilon is actually a potential difference and not a force. There is a negative sign in the expression IR for the potential difference between A and B. This is because of the direction of the current I which flows from B to A in the electrolyte. We also observe that since V is the potential difference across R, we can write the following using Ohm's law. V equals IR. Combining this equation with the above equation, IR equals E minus IR. I equals E by R plus R. The maximum current that can be drawn from a cell is for R equals zero and it is I maximum current equals E by R. However, in most cells, the maximum allowed current is much lower than this to prevent permanent damage to the cell. Like resistors, cells can be combined together in an electric circuit. And like resistors, one can, for calculating currents and voltages in a circuit, replace a combination of cells by an equivalent cell. Two cells of EMFs, E1 and E2 in the series, R1 and R2, are their internal resistances. For connections across A and C, the combination can be considered as one cell of EMF, EEQ, and an internal resistance, REQ. Consider first two cells in series as shown in the figure where one terminal of the two cells is joined together leaving the other terminal in either cell free. E1, E2 are the EMFs of the two cells and R1, R2 their internal resistances respectively. Let V of A, V of B, V of C be the potentials at points A, B and C shown here. Then V of A minus V of B is the potential difference between the positive and negative terminals of the first cell. The rule for series combination can be extended to any number of cells. The equivalent EMF of a series combination of N cells is just the sum of their individual EMFs and the equivalent internal resistance of a series combination of N cells is just the sum of their internal resistances. 
Next, consider a parallel combination of the cells as shown in the figure. I1 and I2 are the currents leaving the positive electrodes of the cells. At the point B1, I1 and I2 flow in whereas the current I flows out. Since as much charge flows in as out, we have I equals I1 plus I2. Let V of B1 and V of B2 be the potentials at B1 and B2 respectively. Then, considering the first cell, the potential difference across its terminals is V of B1 minus V of B2. Hence, V is given by V equals E1 R2 plus E2 R1 by R1 plus R2 minus I into R1 R2 by R1 plus R2. If this combination is to be replaced by a single cell with an EMF, E equivalent, and internal resistance R equivalent between B1 and B2, we would have V equals E equivalent minus I R equivalent. In the diagram, we had connected the positive and negative terminals together so that the currents I1 and I2 flow out of the positive terminals. Even if the negative terminal of second was connected to the positive terminal of the first, the equations that we just derived would still be valid. However, E2 will have to be considered minus E2 in that case. These equations can be extended for n number of cells, E1, E2, till En, with their internal resistances R1, R2, and so on, till Rn, respectively, that are connected in parallel. They can be generalized as 1 upon R equivalent equals 1 upon R1 plus till 1 upon Rn. E equivalent upon R equivalent equals E1 upon R1 plus till En upon Rn.